one other thing I want to touch on, and I know you're a fairly opinionated fella in this realm. Um, what are your thoughts on most of the commercially available, uh, specifically hunter marketed seed blends for food plots? Uh, I know that there are a lot of those out there that uh, there aren't very many that don't include some kind of brassica. Um, and I'd like to know how you <laughs> feel about that. <laughs> you want to get me in trouble, don't you? Uh, yeah. You know, I I never knew that uh, that planting food plots was a religious experience because it must be because people get so red faced and you know the the first time I said something bad about brassicas, I didn't know that my parents were not married. You know, it's. I'm, to be honest with you, I can give a hoot what Adam Bohunter 362 thinks about anything. Yeah, they, these blogs, it's a horrible place. I don't, I don't even like to go there. But here, here's, here's, let's start from the beginning. We did the very first food plot research ever done. As a matter of fact, we came up with the term food plot. Okay. Uh, when we first started, when I started the Institute for White to Deer Management Research at Stephen F. Austin, we called in what today would be called focus groups. We called in hunters and landowners and everybody and said, what do you need to know? And one of the first questions they asked was, can we plant something for the deer? Well, we went, well, we'll find out. So the first step in developing a 20-year research program at that point, we're now in our third 20-year program, uh, is I went out and talk, I said, I, I used some logic. I said, who knows more about growing forages for ruminants than anybody? And I, it was dairymen. So I went and asked Dairyman, what do you grow? And they said, cereal, grains, and legumes. Pure and simple. So our first research, we looked at various cereal grains, and we looked at legumes, clovers, uh, alfalfa in some places. Alfalfa is a great deer feed, but it's very picky, and you got to be a good farmer to grow it, and you got to have the right soil. But So that was the first things we looked at. There is not one plant that you can bring up and ask me about that we hadn't tested years ago we've tested them all and there's only five that work but uh but you know it's a big business now and our our research we we have what we call beta test sites all over the united states where we put out what we call salad bars and we let, let the deer tell us what they like okay and uh and lo and behold for the cool season, cereal grains are still the best the best thing you can grow out there. Uh, that's why I worked with LSU. And uh, and what I kept, that was another interesting thing. What I came up with thing about brassicas, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, you know, I, I was told that I was some sort of shield for the for Buck Four Uh Well, they don't pay me. I do. I, we do independent research. We worked with LSU. Dr. Stephen Harrison, who's, who's one of the few remaining oat breeders in the world, is one of the best there is. And in 30 years, we have released only three varieties of oats. Now, wheat is also a good, a good food plot variety, but if you plant wheat, you cut your yield by 40%. But a lot of times up in the Wisconsin, Michigan, those areas, we grow wheat because we, uh, even though uh, that variety that we developed with LSU of oats is good down to about eight degrees. Uh, we did better than that. So uh, clovers, you know, we look at all the clovers. And uh, there was one company, I won't mention their name, they, uh, they uh, upset me pretty bad one time. But they, the problem with these guys is, is they're businessmen. And they're and they're looking for a gimmick, you know, the latest thing. And if they find something, the problem with with uh, with white clover, like Madonna, was it grows real well in the blackland soils of uh, Alabama. Okay, and the person that was working with with the Ladino clovers, he had some good success there. So he didn't grow anywhere, and he had people planting Ladino clovers in South Texas, where they've got like twelve inches of rain a year. It's not. It's not going to work at all. So there, get to get to the chase here is that those five things are cereal grains, which would be wheat and oats. Rye is horrible. If you plant ryegrass, it reflects on your parents. Don't do it. Okay? Uh, red and white clover. 
and there are several varieties of those, red and white clover. And then uh, over the last 15 or 20 years, we've been working with chicory. And chicory is a really good one. Uh, it's kind of persnickety, but if you can get it in the ground and get it up, it's going to put down a two or three foot tap root and it'll, it's really drought hardy and it's a good one. But there's 126 varieties of them. And if you buy a bag of chicories from in the big box store, you probably got most of the 126 varieties in that bag. And deer, there's some of them there deer don't like. If it's got a white or green rib in the middle of the leaf, deer love it. If it's got a pink or purple rib, deer hate it. So, you know, then, then you know, we've had everything, all the magic beans. We had, we had Lab Lab. We had God, you, you name it. There's a bunch of them out there, and, not, and none of them have panned out. They haven't panned out at all. Just a good, solid program. Summer, uh, warm season, and the North people are, we finally got them planting cool season, but warm season up there, uh, we plant uh, we plant chicory in the fall, and of course it carries on in the summer. But uh, we plant we plant a lot of mixed corn and soybeans. In the south, we plant corn and cowpeas. Uh, but especially in the south, if you plant cowpeas, you're going to have to put an electric fence around it, or a net with these new net wire fences that poly net fences have been working with. Uh, to keep them off of it till you want them in. And we've come up with some rotation grazing systems that work great. You know, we rotate our deer around to different plots and it's pretty cool stuff and it's not very expensive to do. But I would never recommend anybody buy a, a mixture of seed for the following reasons. First of all, uh, if, you look at, if you look at the ingredient and, and one of the few laws that you have to obey says that the most abundant has to be listed first and on down. The first two are always the cheapest junk that you can buy, okay? And it's the majority of the seed in there. The second thing is the seeds are all different sizes and they have different planting depths that they need. There's no way to correctly plant a mix. The next thing is that that mix changes every year. But they just go out and commodity buy and they're just throwing stuff together and seeing what sticks to the wall, okay? So buy pure, if you're going to plant food plots, buy pure seed, whatever you're going to plant. And I'm not going to promote anybody's product, but, but if you plant a clover, if you want to plant a white clover, go get a good white clover and plant it right. And that's the best thing to do. Now I'll get, I'll get to the part people will hate me. Some people will hate me. Brassicas. Okay. Brassicas have got a real problem. First of all, Nebraska, people think that we have in browse, in native plants, we have first, second, and third choice native plants. Okay? Uh, we also have first, second, and third choice food plot varieties. We have some varieties that deer, if you give them a choice, are not going to eat unless that's the only thing they have. And I, I put something out on Facebook. I showed some of our plots. We put, put out uh, our controls out every year or various varieties of brassicas, and our deer don't eat them because they got everything else. And uh, the big argument that, that people came back with me was, uh, well, when times get rough, they're very important because the deer will eat them. Well, what kind of statement is that? that it's got things that got to get bad before the deer will eat them? But the most important thing, and I believe me, I've got the science, the published science to back it up, yeah. it's got a lot of toxic alcohol. And uh, when you get, like in Wisconsin, we had lots of reports of uh, losing deer because they, they cause diarrhea and hemolytic anemia if you eat too much of them. In Europe, they regulate how many acres you can plant because they've been well documented to kill red deer and roe deer, and, and hares for that matter. So the, the brassicas, I'm, I'm just not a real fan of, but you know, if, you, if you're one of these religious uh, brassica fanatics, well, I'm not going to argue with you, just don't do it. <laughs> but you got, in a good year, in a good year, you're going to do fine. In a really bad year, you could kill some deer. Uh, 